This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. Hi, Hi! I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're Enchantarium. In today's video, we are finally finishing our Foxes of the Seasons series. We've got an Autumn Kitsune Akino, who is a guiding spirit of the North Star, a magical girl Arctic Fox Sylvie, representing winter, a Spring Kitsune Lisa, with a cherry blossom theme, and now it's time for a doll that represents summer. In our last Foxy video, we asked you for help in designing this character. We rummaged through the comments and there were a couple of themes that repeatedly popped up. There were a lot of mentions of sunflowers, and some of you wanted this doll to be a boy. There were a lot of comments suggesting a desert-inspired fennec fox, but there were as many votes for a regular red fox. And because a group of foxes would not be complete without a classic orange one, we decided to go with the red fox option. The main theme is going to be water, fire, sun, beach, and seaside in general. For this project, we chose Torelai Stripe from the Monster Highline. She has a perfect orange skin tone and cat-like features. Yes, I know that foxes are canines, but it still helps. I'm giving her a very drastic haircut and doing something even more dramatic with the help of video editing. Doll customizing is really disturbing sometimes. The hair and the factory paint has to go because that's what makes this doll look like Torelai, and we want a totally new character. Let's start this doll from giving her a new face. I place the doll on the body before starting any work, so I don't risk any damage as it sometimes happens when putting the head on after the face up. I sprayed the face twice with Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat Sealant to give it a paper-like texture. There are projects where I don't know what I'm doing and I just go with the flow, but this time I have a clear vision for her face. I want to decorate her forehead with a design that looks like a shell, but has also a wave or a droplet shape in it. I know that I want a soft expression, something between the sweet look of Lisa and the mysterious vibe of Akino. After a quick sketch with watercolor pencils and one protective layer of MSC, I'm switching to acrylics for the forehead painting. I was contemplating whether to give her a patch of white fur on the lower part of the face to resemble a fox even more, but instead I decided to make her lips white. The whole design is going to be inspired by Japanese traditional clothing with a modern touch, just like our other foxes, so I'm trying to express it in makeup too. I'm adding a bit of blue to the tips of the droplets and blending the pigment with a bit of water. It's time to take care of the eyes. I'm adding blue to the irises, making the brows more defined and drawing the eyelashes. At first I tried lashes that point up, but I think that she may look better with lashes going down. It gave her a calm look. I'm going back and forth between watercolor pencils and acrylic paint until I achieve the look I like. One of my favorite parts is adding white details to the brows, lashes, irises and around the eyes. Some touch-ups here and there and I can add Perlex powder highlights. And this is how her new face looks. Later I altered the catch lights because Barb didn't like them so the eyes look a tiny bit different in final photos. I really wanted us to have a website for a long time, and now, thanks to Squarespace, you can visit Enchantarium.com. I have zero experience in website building, but thanks to the templates, I was able to build the website pretty quickly, and since they're customizable, everything is as I want it to be. The photos even scale themselves automatically, so I don't have to worry about things going out of whack. With a built-in shop feature, I can now share all of my patterns and files with you guys too. Instead of having them hastily thrown in a drive, nobody can find. Having our own website is a really straightforward way to connect and share things with you. If you're also looking to share something with the world, whether it be a shop, portfolio or a blog, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash enchantarium to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Since all of the foxes sport eastern fashion, for this one I'm finally sewing I think one of my favorite types visually, the Hakama pants. There's just something about the pleats that speaks to me. I'm using a deep blue fabric for the pants. My rotary blades get dull pretty quickly, so I made this little contraption to sharpen them up, since buying one in Poland seems next to impossible. Ah, 
much better. With the pieces cut out, I am hemming the side openings of the pants. Then I join two pieces to make a front and add the other ones on the side to make the back. I hem the bottoms and I'm using my marbly block to quickly cool down the fabric into the position. This makes sure I get a crisp edge as the fabric is very stubborn. I'm marking the plates of the pattern and pressing them in, making sure to use plenty of steam. I secured them at the top and I can sew the back rise. There's two placket looking things that get added to the front and back and the inseam can be sewn as well. A little turning, pressing and the pants are done. To complement the pants we need a kimono shirt and I chose this cream beige color to be the sand to the pants ocean. I'm sewing the pieces at the back seam first and attaching the sleeves, which I hemmed as well. I'm pressing the collar in half and adding it to the garment. Then the sleeves come together as well as do the side seams. There's some hemming left on the front and bottom and we can carefully turn the huge sleeves through the tiny armholes. A bit of ironing and this set is so cute! I'm pretty sure she's going to look better and more fox-like with bigger ears, so I'm sculpting a new shape around her cat ears using epoxy sculpt. She's going to have glued hair and that always adds volume, so the ears have to be a bit exaggerated so they don't get lost in yarn. After a few hours when the first layer is dry, I can apply the second layer. This time it's less about the shape and more about the texture, so I'm trying to make everything as smooth as possible with my fingers, sculpting tools and water. When this layer dried, I spent a few minutes sanding the surface and then covered the ears and the scalp with orange acrylic paint. Foxes have beige fur inside the ears and so I'm painting the insides with cream paint. They also have black tips of the ears and I'm painting a fade from black to orange using warm tones of brown and red. For the fur and hair, I'm going to use a few different colors of yarn. To make doll hair out of acrylic yarn, you have to separate the braids with a comb or a pipe brush. The result looks like this and for a foxtail it's perfect, but to use it as hair on the head, I straightened it with a hair straightener. First I'm applying a small cream weft on the inside of the ears and let it dry. To do the hair, I'm starting from the back of the head at the bottom and going around and up. She looks really funny with the long ear hair, so let's trim it to shape of the ears. Then I'm adding a brighter and more saturated orange on top. Off camera I prepared a part weft. I just folded it on cardboard and pressed it with a hair straightener, so the edge is clean and without glue. For the shoes, I 3D printed my shoe bases and with some painter's tape I made a template for the insole, which I then traced on some paper and covered with the same fabric I used to make the shirt. On my inkjet I printed a bamboo pattern to some adhesive vinyl to cover the shoe bases. I thought it was pretty clever as it covered the imperfections and layer lines of the print and fit the overall vibe of the doll. I first glued it around the sole and then cut little tabs to fold to the bottom and the insole part. I cleaned up the bottom a bit to get rid of some of the bumpiness and glued another piece of vinyl to cover it up. Using my soldering helping hand, I made myself a little stand to make up the upper part of the sandals. I started with some light blue ribbon and made some straps. I glued them down and then glued the insole to the sole, but it was pretty underwhelming. I tried a different design with the straps tied in the middle, but this was somehow worse. They say the third time's the charm, right? I took some blue embroidery thread and braided it a couple times. 
Then I clipped it tempor temporarily to split the thread so I could make two separate braids from that point. I secured the big braid <laughs> big braid, with some glue so I could cut off the knot later. I first glued a paper insole to the sole with white glue as the Yoohoo glue was dissolving the ink from the vinyl. Then to the proper insoles I glued the big braid at the front and with even tinier braids I made two sets of loops. This can be now put together with the sole and the long braids can be threaded through the loops in a crisscross pattern. And it looks much much better than the two previous options. I really wanted to make a sun umbrella for this kitty and I tried some tutorials online and landed on this blue design. I'll link it below. I decided to employ my Cricut to do some of the work for me, so I printed the pattern I wanted on the umbrella and let the Cricut do some pre-folding and cutting for me. The black border serves as an indicator for the machine to know where to cut it. It scans it with a light to know where it's at. With the pieces cut, I have very precise score lines I can bend in the right direction. I'm creasing every other line towards me with the pattern facing up and then the other lines with the pattern facing down. Then comes the hardest part, which is usually pretty much omitted in the tutorials. You find the cut perpendicular to the fold, is perpendicular, no parallel, double perpendicular, and reverse the fold on one of the sections. I have the same problem with vertical and horizontal for some reason. Basically you take the lower half and reverse the crease. Then repeat all around for both of the parts. Now, the cut lines have to match when you put the two parts together and you may notice that my folds are mirrored across the pieces while they should nest together. I ignored that, thinking it would work out anyway and started to glue the little tabs together, joining the pieces. This will result in an umbrella that is not working, as you can see. I had to rip it apart and refold one of the sections with the creases going in the opposite direction of what I made the first time. Sklejam jeszcze raz, bez powodu, wcale nie dlatego, że coś zepsułam. Now that the creases are correct, I can fold the tabs down and put my stick through the holes. With a strip of paper, I am making an end cap, which I'm gluing to the stick so it doesn't move. At the bottom, I'm making a wider handle, which can move up and down to close the umbrella. It needs to be attached to the origami part, and the cap needs to be glued down to it as well. The paper I used was a bit on the thick side and doubled up, so it doesn't move as smoothly as I'd like, but it works somewhat. Now the part that took the longest, the tails. Some people in the comments pointed out that we can make the tail number increase by 3 by making a summer kitsune with 6 tails. So winter has 1 tail, spring 3, this one will have 6, and the autumn kitsune has a full set of 9 tails. I'm starting by cutting the wire into 3 double-ended pieces and coloring them with medical tape for better grip. Some leftovers from yarn brushing will help with good volume of the tails. Then I'm making it stay in place with orange yarn. Starting from the tip, I'm gluing brushed yarn wefts, light colors first. So I've got light beige viscose fiber and yellow, orange, muted warm brown and dark red yarn. The hair at the ends could use some trimming. After a quick haircut, the shape of the tail is more cohesive and fox-like. I'm twisting the tails together pretty tightly to make sure the whole structure won't fall apart. I'm adding a bit of wire to give it a bit more support. I'm gluing the magnet and then trying to cover all the ugly parts with more yarn. Torelai already has a giant hole in her body, but it's still too small for the magnet I have. A lino cut tool will help me widen it. I'm stuffing the body with tinfoil so the magnet has something to lay on and I'm gluing it in place. To spice up the kimono, I'm going to paint a sea wave on the sleeves. My first try didn't really work, so I covered it with a second attempt. This time in a diagonal shape, so it's visible when she has her hands down.
Now it looks like a beach. Barb designed and printed these teeny tiny lanterns and since my job is to paint everything she prints, I'm giving them some colors with acrylic paint. They will make a good decoration on the belt. I want to combine them with this orange tassel and tie the decoration to the blue ribbon on her waist. I feel like there's something missing on the top of the design, so I made this cute accessory and placed it with a pin. And with this little detail, the doll is ready. This is how she turned out. I really enjoyed working with this ocean and beach theme and I think going back to the classic red fox was a perfect choice for the final installment of the Foxes of the Seasons series. I'm sure it's not a universal experience across the globe, but when we think about summer, a beach and a large body of water is what comes to mind. As kids, we were fortunate enough that our parents took us on family vacations to some beautiful beaches across the world. Bulgaria, Croatia, Greece... And that is the mental image of a summer vacation to us. This year, my PhD works allowed me to go to Lisbon for a conference. Again, guys, I know, wish me luck. So I can add Portugal's beaches to the list. For the doll's name, we landed on Namiko, the child of the waves. What's your favorite summer destination? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. And check out our website enchantarium.com. Bye! Water, fire, sun, bitch, <laughs> and seaside. <laughs> this summer. <laughs> it's time to take care of the yeah. We have the ears, the yeah. eyes. <laughs>